Okay, so we come to our very last talk. Dennis Dimitriv, and he will talk about magnospheric model of the gas accretion onto RZ prism. Yes, my name is Dennis Dimitriv, and I will talk about exactly about the magnospheric accretion model onto the RZ prism star. And uh, here's a small outline of my talk. Of course, I will start with a small uh, brief review of the RZPC star itself. Uh, then I will uh, discuss our attempts on model uh, the star with magnetosphere. And uh, finally, I will discuss the impact of the accretion spot on the line profile. And uh, of course, in the end, there will be some, conclu some conclusions. So, uh, this is uh, the RZPC star is the oldest UX or a star. Uh, its age estimated, uh, is estimated at about uh, 20, 30 billion, million years old. Uh, the parameters of the star I show here, it's a uh, um, quite uh, normal star uh, with a small uh, rotation, about 12 kilometers per second. Uh, and uh, it has a very small accretion rate at normal state, about uh, 10 to the minus 11 uh, power, uh, uh, 7 to the uh, 10 to the minus 12 power, uh, so about 10 to the minus 11 um, solar masses per year. But it's strongly variable, uh, as it was uh, um, discussed in the Patravnov's talk uh, the day before yesterday, I think, Tuesday. Uh, and uh, here is the profile during one of the accretion flares, and, as, and you can see there is strong accretion signals here, uh, the strong uh, absorption in the red wing, and also emission uh, central. So uh, our goal was to model this profile, uh, which was adopted from this work, uh, with the magnetospheric accretion model. Uh, at first, we take the classical approach that was firstly uh, published in uh, Hartmann uh, et al. work uh, in uh, 1994. Uh, then it was further developed in Maceroli et al. and Lima et al. and uh, further. Um, and uh, here are the assumptions for this model. So the gas is completely frozen into the dipole magnetosphere. Uh, uh, it's free falling, no viscosity, and uh, also there is solid body rotation, so um, there is no distortion in the magnetosphere during the rotations. And it is a hydrogen only gas, and uh, here is a small sketch of the magnetosphere. It has the inner radius RME and outer radius RMO, and the gas flows from the disk to the star uh, along the dipole magnetic field lines. So uh, there is four main parameters in this model. It's inner inner radius, outer radius, uh, maximum temperature in the magnetosphere, and of course the accretion rate. Um, of course, more details you can find in uh, Hartmann work itself, and uh, more details about uh, this model, which uh, is uh, not really uh, varied from Hartmann model, you can find in our work. Uh, so here is a radiation transfer part of our model. It's a, a system of equations that we use to determine the stationary state. And I, uh, and I please notice that this is a stationary uh, assumption, that at all times the magnetosphere is completely stationary uh, in the population sense. Uh, so uh, to connect the uh, uh, mean intensity with the source function, we use a sublef approximation with non-local radiative transfer. And here is a non-local uh, term. It's of course it's uh, quite uh, hard to compute this term, of, uh, but here it's just a one uh, letter. Um, so this is our results. Uh, this is the parameters that fit the profile the best. Uh, the inner radius is about six star radius. The outer eight star radius. Uh, maximum temperature is seven thousand eight hundred kelvins, and the accretion tape, uh, rate is about ten to the minus nine uh, minus nine uh, power. Mass sol solar mass per year. Here is the uh, uh, logarith uh, logarithm of uh, uh, an year of uh, uh, electron density. And here is the uh, population of the second level. You can notice that uh, population, uh, the electron density is quite low, about uh, 10 to the minus 8 power, and it will be important later. So here is a profile that uh, best that is, that is the best uh, fit to our observations. You can see that the uh, absorption part is fitted quite well, but in the emission part we have uh, too wide and quite flat profile, with, which is uh, completely disagrees with observations. Uh, so what could be wrong? Uh, 
one can estimate that the recombination time in the magnetosphere with such small electron density will be about 10 to the 5 seconds. Uh, but uh, we can also estimate the time that, ta that it takes gas to fall onto the star, and this is about, uh, it's easy estimation, uh, the uh, star radius is about 10 uh, to the 11 centimeters, and uh, we have a 10 radius magnetosphere, and so we have uh, about 10 to the 5 seconds uh, too. And this is... Uh, this is bad for our assumption of stationary magnetosphere because the gas simply can't um, relax to the uh, stationary state at this time. So our assumption doesn't hold and we need to uh, be more accurate and uh, take uh, the steady assumption that the only partial derivative of the population uh, of the electron density is zero, but not total. So it... Uh, this is the equation that we actually solved, um, and this is the result. Uh, our assumptions that helps us to uh, solve this equation are shown here. We uh, assume that uh, almost all of the hydrogen gas is in, uh, in the ions or in the uh, neutral ground state atoms. So the Ne plus N1 equals an H. And uh, also we assume that uh, only Ne and N1 uh, can't uh, relax cannot relax to the stationary state because upper levels are relaxing much more quickly. Uh, and here's our results. Uh, we uh, as, um, take uh, the same parameters as before. And here is a stationary uh, blue line and non-stationary magnetosphere. This is an E. You can see that uh, changes are quite drastic. Uh, and here's the N2. And here's the profile. Again, it's the uh, best profile that we can uh, as we can uh, could do, uh, and here the emission is almost has almost completely gone from the picture, but the absorption uh, still holds well. So if we uh, if there is no emission, we must find an additional source, and this uh, this source is the accretion spot. Uh, we uh, asked Alexander Dotin to calculate uh, the spectrum of the accretion spot, and this is the parameters that uh, we assumed. Um, and uh, it's not completely in agreement with our model. Uh, we need to, uh, we need better calculations, actually. Uh, this is, for now, this is simply, uh, we simply added this profile to our results, but we still get a very uh, well profile. I think that there is a, a emission at about uh, the same height, the white is uh, too, too, too big, but uh, I think we can uh, handle this by uh, twitching the parameters a bit. <coughs> so, our conclusions. Uh, the RZP uh, profile H alpha can be modeled using a uh, pretty simple accretion model, relatively simple. Uh, accretion spot emission can explain the term peak, and uh, accretion uh, itself explains absorption. Uh, but we get a slightly wrong inclination angle because we uh, actually th thought that we will get the angle about uh, 70 degrees or so, as it uh, must be for UX or a type star. But we actually get 42 degrees, and we think that it can be uh, because uh, the magnetic field uh, is not non-dipole or uh, the gas is not completely frozen. Uh, one of our assumptions of classical model is wrong. Uh, and our main uh, actual conclusion for small accretion times, the stationary, the stationary assumption doesn't hold. And uh, it's, it uh, doesn't hold even for uh, bigger, bigger accretion rate. We cal actually calculated the uh, populations for the uh, classical Hartman model uh, with, magneto uh, with, uh, magnetic rate, magnet ac with accretion rate <laughs> uh, about 10 to the minus 8 which is quite classical for Tetauri stars. And in this case, uh, the, uh, there is some uh, disagreement between stationary and non-stationary model, which is, I think, very important. So thank you for your attention. Uh, so, questions? 
Um, about the mass accretion rate, uh, I understand that modeling is good with 10 to minus 9, but you uh, showed 10 to minus 12. What is this? Uh, how can, can you explain this disagreement? Uh, uh, this star is actually pretty variable in accretion rate, and uh, this was simply an accretion flare. So uh, with uh, temp aggression temp about 10 to the minus 11, we can't get any profile, of course. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For the question, Antonella. I have another one. Uh, when you model uh, the the um, accretion spot, the, the the shock, you have a ratio of uh, line to continuum in that. But then, when you look at the whole spectrum of the star, you need the filling factor, basically. And so, how do you deal with that? So, I can show the picture. We have uh, our magnetosphere. Uh, let's assume that this is a Hartmann magnetosphere. And the filling factor is determined simply by the area uh, at which the magnetosphere lines are touching the star. Of course, uh, it uh, the filling factor is uh, <coughs> is there. It's already there. So, and what fraction do you cover <coughs> then? Uh, the fraction that is covered by accretion spot is about eight uh, percent. Further questions? Okay. If not, uh, you. Huh? Uh, uh, this is the first uh, solution non, in non-stationary uh, case for magnetospheric accretion. Uh, it is uh, important for objects with low mass accretion rate. I know only one example where the uh, non-stationary uh, solution of uh, um, such questions were made. This is an uh, early stage of uh, development of our universe in the epoch of recombinations. They also include uh, non-stationary effect in calculations. This is another example of such model. <laughs> Sorry, no. Sorry. <laughs> we uh, 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 and uh, it was uh, um, uh, uh, how to say. Um, it was saturated. It was saturated by uh, very interesting uh, uh, talks, very interesting discussions, and uh, I think that uh, everybody uh, uh, must feel that this uh, workshop was uh, very homogeneous in reality, because we considered the different. Uh, different physical uh, situation, but uh, all they were collected uh, around uh, one uh, uh, question. Uh, what is the physics of non-stationary processes in the uh, sake of stellar disk and how to observe these processes in reality? Uh, if uh, somebody uh, wants to say additional words, please, <laughs> I can uh, present this. Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I, I would like to thank the organizers uh, of this conference and first of all, of course, Vladimir Greenin. It was a very nice for me conference. Uh, I um, knew a lot from uh, new information, I mean. So thank you very much. Can say still. <laughs> don't, don't forget tomorrow morning. <laughs> Nine May I uh, tell something? Only one word. Last. The first conference, you sorry, types. Uh, the, the number of participants was about uh, 30 persons. It, it was very interesting and so on, and now it is about 60. Uh, in, in, next, maybe in 10 years, I don't know. <laughs>
<laughs> in geometric progression also. So, and uh, of course, I am very happy to see so many colleagues, uh, colleagues and uh, friends here. Uh, I hope, in spite of this weather, you will enjoy tomorrow excursion and uh, communication. So, thank you. And okay, we have Rio. <laughs>